The old radio crackled, a symphony of static filling the small, dimly lit room. John fiddled with the dial, searching for a clear signal, his brow furrowed in concentration. A flash of lightning illuminated the dust motes dancing in the air, followed by a deafening clap of thunder that shook the house. And then he heard it, a voice cutting through the static, a low, guttural whisper. Get out. Now. John froze, his blood turning to ice. He glanced around the room, his heart pounding in his chest. The old Victorian house creaked and groaned around him, the storm raging outside like a furious beast. He had been alone in the house for days, working on his new novel, seeking inspiration in the solitude. Now that solitude felt menacing, heavy with an unseen presence. He tried to convince himself it was his imagination, a trick of the wind whistling through the cracks in the ancient walls. But the voice, the chilling whisper, lingered in his mind, a seed of unease taking root. The house stood on a windswept hill overlooking the small, sleepy town, a relic of a bygone era. Its once vibrant paint was now faded and peeling, the ornate details slowly crumbling under the weight of time. The windows, like vacant eyes, stared out blankly, reflecting the stormy gray sky. John had been drawn to the house's isolation, its air of forgotten grandeur. He saw it as a sanctuary, a place where he could escape the noise and distractions of the world and delve into the depths of his imagination. He had rented it for a month, hoping to finish his latest horror masterpiece. He had ignored the warnings from the locals, the whispered tales of the house's dark past. They spoke of strange occurrences, unexplained noises, and a lingering sense of dread. He had dismissed them as superstitious nonsense, the product of overactive imaginations. Now, as the storm raged around him and the unsettling voice echoed in his mind, he began to question his skepticism. John tried to focus on his writing, to lose himself in the world of his fictional characters. But the whispers persisted, growing louder, more insistent. They seemed to emanate from the walls, from the shadows that danced in the flickering lamplight. He felt a constant, unseen gaze upon him, watching, waiting. He tried to rationalize the sounds, attributing them to the storm, the old house settling, his own heightened anxiety. But deep down, a primal fear gnawed at him. He was not alone. Something else shared the house with him, something unseen, something malevolent. His dreams became plagued by nightmares, vivid and disturbing. He saw shadowy figures lurking in the corners of his vision, heard voices calling his name in the dead of night. He woke up in a cold sweat, his heart pounding, the feeling of unseen eyes watching him linger long after he opened his eyes. One afternoon, while exploring the dusty attic, John stumbled upon a hidden compartment beneath the floorboards. Inside, he found a leather-bound diary, its pages brittle with age. The diary belonged to a woman named Amelia, the former owner of the house. Her elegant script detailed her descent into madness, her chilling accounts of the strange occurrences that haunted her final days. Amelia wrote of whispers in the dark, shadowy figures appearing in the mirrors, a feeling of being constantly watched. She described a growing sense of dread, a belief that the house itself was alive, feeding on her sanity. Her entries became more frantic, more incoherent, until they abruptly ended, leaving her fate a mystery. John felt a chill run down his spine as he read Amelia's words. Her experiences mirrored his own, her terror echoing through the years. The diary was more than just a historical artifact. It was a warning, a testament to the darkness that resided within the walls of the old house. The whispers intensified, becoming clearer, more articulate. They taunted him, mocked his fear, whispered secrets he couldn't comprehend. The shadows seemed to deepen. The air grew heavy with an oppressive presence. He felt a constant sense of dread, a feeling that something terrible was about to happen. One night, as he stood in the bathroom, brushing his teeth, he glanced at the mirror and saw a face staring back at him. It wasn't his own. It was a pale, gaunt face with hollow eyes and a cruel smile, 
a face that radiated pure malice. He spun around, his heart leaping into his throat. The bathroom was empty. He stared at the mirror again, his breath catching in his chest. The face was gone. He tried to convince himself it was a hallucination, a trick of the light, but the image was burned into his mind, a chilling reminder that he was not alone. Driven by a morbid curiosity and a growing sense of dread, John decided to investigate the house's history. He delved into local archives, scouring old newspapers and historical records, piecing together the house's dark past. He discovered that the house had been the site of a series of gruesome murders a century earlier. The owner, a wealthy merchant, had gone mad, brutally murdering his family before taking his own life. The house had remained empty ever since, shunned by the locals, its tragic history woven into the fabric of the town's folklore. As John uncovered the truth, he realized that the whispers, the shadows, the chilling occurrences were not figments of his imagination. They were remnants of the past, echoes of the horror that had stained the house's history. He was living in a tomb, haunted by the tormented souls of its former occupants. The whispers reached a fever pitch, swirling around him, taunting him, driving him to the brink of madness. He saw shadowy figures lurking in every corner, felt unseen hands brush against his skin, heard voices calling his name in the dead of night. He was trapped in a waking nightmare, the boundary between reality and delusion blurring. The house was alive, feeding on his fear, amplifying his terror. He was no longer in control. He was a puppet, dancing to the tune of an unseen, malevolent force. The truth hit him like a physical blow. The house wasn't just haunted, it was the source of the haunting. The evil that resided within its walls wasn't a ghost or a spirit. It was something more ancient, more primal, something that fed on human fear and despair. Driven to the edge of sanity, John decided to flee the house. He packed his belongings, his hands shaking, his mind racing. As he made his way to the front door, the whispers intensified, morphing into screams, pleading with him to stay, threatening him with unimaginable horrors if he left. He ignored them, his fear replaced by a desperate need to escape. He threw open the door and ran out into the night, the storm still raging around him. He didn't stop running until he reached the town, his lungs burning, his legs aching, the screams of the house echoing in his mind. He sought refuge in a small motel on the outskirts of town. Its bright lights and bustling atmosphere a stark contrast to the oppressive darkness of the Victorian house. He collapsed on the bed exhausted, his mind still reeling from the horrors he had experienced. John never returned to the house. He left town the next day, haunted by the memory of the whispers, the shadows, the chilling presence that had invaded his mind. He tried to move on, to bury the experience deep within his subconscious, but the fear lingered, a constant shadow in the corner of his vision. He couldn't shake the feeling that he had escaped something terrible, something that was still out there, lurking in the darkness. He was left with more questions than answers. What was the true nature of the evil that dwelled within the house? Why had it chosen him? And what would have happened if he had stayed? The experience changed him, left him with a profound sense of unease, a lingering fear of the unknown. He was no longer the same man who had entered the house seeking inspiration. He had stared into the abyss, and the abyss had stared back. Years later, John still thought about the house. He couldn't escape the memory, the chilling whispers that haunted his dreams. He often wondered if the house was still standing, if the evil within its walls was still preying on unsuspecting souls. He knew that he would never forget the terror he had experienced, the feeling of being watched, hunted, tormented by an unseen force. He had glimpsed the darkness that lurked beneath the surface of reality, the primal fear that resided in the deepest recesses of the human psyche. And he knew that the whispers would always be there, 
a chilling reminder of the horrors that awaited those who dared to venture too close to the edge of the abyss. The old Victorian house remained a chilling testament to the enduring power of fear, a haunting reminder that some doors are best left unopened. 